What's up guys, Adam here with another video and in today's video I'm going to be doing a review on my latest generator which is a pretty big one. It's the Cat RP12000E and the reason I got a generator of this size is because here in Florida we get threatened with hurricanes pretty much on a yearly basis and when we do get one it oftentimes knocks out the power at my house anyway for extended amounts of time. So I wanted to get a generator that was capable of powering my whole house. Now that doesn't mean it can power every single thing all at once if it all kicked on at the same time. Uh, I wanted something that could power the majority of my house, including my four ton AC unit, which this one I've already tested it's capable of doing. So I ended up buying it through uh, electricgeneratorsdirect.com. I ordered it and the next day they shipped it out. And if it wasn't for the weekend, I probably would have gotten it within three to four days. Uh, so their customer service was great and uh, their shipping process was very efficient. Uh, I bought it for, I think it was a little over $2,200 uh, without tax. And that was with a sale going on. The sale's over and I think it's back up to like $2,800. But that's about in the right price range for a generator this size. But we, I just, again, wanted it for in case we had hurricanes, which I don't know if you see any wind or the rain that's going on behind me. That's actually Tropical Storm Isaias. I think I said that right. That's starting to make its way up our coast here. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna have to end up using it for this storm, but it's just an example of we do get tropical storms and hurricanes. So it's ready to go if it is needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into the video and go over some of the specifications on this thing and what it's capable of doing. All right, so when you get this generator, it's gonna come with more than just the generator itself. You're also gonna get this, a set of wheels with an axle that connects the wheels together. It also is gonna come with this handle uh, so that you can wheel this thing around a little bit easier, which is really nice because the generator is, is very heavy. And it also comes with a bunch of tools and bolts in order to put everything together. It comes with some wrenches, it comes with a, uh, a screwdriver, it comes with a spark plug wrench, it comes with a funnel to put the oil in, and it comes with two quarts of oil. And you're only going to use one and a half quarts uh, so as to not overfill. If you overfill, then you're going to have a lot of smoke coming out for a while. So again, this is the Cat RP12000E, and it's obviously made by Caterpillar, who makes some of the really heavy-duty equipment that we all see at construction sites, and this generator is no exception. It really is very heavy-duty. It's a completely steel frame. It's got a roll cage. Everything on it just, for the most part, feels very, very much like quality. Uh, the engine is a 670 cc ohv v-twin engine and it runs on gasoline when you put the gasoline in i would really recommend using some form of a fuel stabilizer as unless you get ethanol free gasoline uh, that ethanol is going to cause your carburetor to gunk up and surge or possibly the engine won't even start over a period of time of not using it so a fuel stabilizer is going to be very important. Now, as the model number implies, 12,000, that is the amount of running wattage that this generator puts out. And its peak or surge watts are 15,000 watts. So let's get really up close and personal on this control panel. And we'll start all the way over here to the left. And if we open up this door, this is basically an engine compartment where you can check your dipstick for your oil levels. And up here on top, that yellow uh, cap that's up there on top, that is where the oil then goes in. And you're going to use the oil funnel that came with the generator because it has a couple different angles to make getting the oil in there a little bit more convenient as it is in there a little ways. And it's a little awkward to get to if you were to use uh, a standard funnel. And I don't know if you'd be able to do it. So definitely want to use the funnel that they include. This is the gas shutoff, and if we wanted to shut that off, we just turn it over, and then we'll just shut, put it back to the on position. Here and here are LED lights that are on this. And as you can see, uh, they're pretty bright, but being as that it's still light, 
you're not going to be able to get the full effect, but if it was dark outside, these really do uh, light up the whole panel so that you can see what's going on if you have to, if you're trying to run your house and it's nighttime and you want to see uh, what to turn on or shut off or plug in or whatever it may be, these really do make it pretty convenient to be able to see everything. So that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, then here is your choke. You know, when you're getting ready to start this thing up before you turn this thing over, you're going to pull this choke out, uh, turn the switch, and start the engine up. And then once it's started, you can just push it back in so that the engine can run normally. Over here again is our on-off switch. And it doesn't just turn on the lights, but if I was to turn it another turn over, it's going to start trying to turn that engine over, kind of like your car does. So this is a electric start only. It does not have a recoil or a pull start on it, which is pretty standard for an engine of this size. And it's actually really convenient and nice to have. Over here is our idle control. And if you flip that switch on to what looks like turtle mode, what that's gonna allow the generator to do is if you are don't have a whole lot plugged in or not a whole lot is running and there's not a lot of demand for electricity, it's gonna allow for the engine to rev down by quite a lot. And the reason it does that is so you can conserve more fuel and then also be allowing it to run for a longer amount of time. Now, if you do start pulling more power, even with this on, it's gonna rev that engine right back up to where it would normally be and then supply the power that is needed and being called for. So that's a really nice feature. Over here is just a standard DC 12, 12 volt uh, cigarette style uh, inlet. And it also has its own circuit breaker and reset. This screen here is gonna show you the volts that it's running or supplying, uh, the hertz that the, the engine is running at, uh, the runtime on the engine, and then lifetime runtime. So you can see when you started it up and look at how long this thing's been running uh, because you don't want to run this thing 24 seven. So after, you know, a good amount of hours, it, you can look at this and see how long it's been running and then, you know, maybe shut it down and give it a break. The screen is also going to give you some codes if it needs any kind of maintenance uh, for like changing the oil or whatever. And your instruction manual will have all the codes in it so you can decipher what this generator is telling you that it is wanting you to look at or do. Over here is a inlet for a charger for your battery. And I don't think that I talked about this, but the battery charger is also included with the generator. So you'll just take that battery charger, plug it into a wall, and then plug the other end into right here. And it's gonna charge that battery down below so that this generator is ready to go whenever you need it. Down here, we've got our standard 20 amp electrical outlets. They're GFCI outlets. Um, and they have their own circuit breakers and resets. And you're just basically gonna use those for extension cords or if you're on a job site, circular saw, uh, air compressor, whatever it may be, these are just your standard plugs. Over here is, uh, they're both 30 amp, 120 volt inlets for a 30 amp plug. And it also, they both also have their own circuit breaker and resets. Over here is a 30 amp twist plug inlet, and this is for 240 volts. And this is gonna be what a lot of people are gonna be using for their transfer switch boxes for their house or power inlet box that then goes to their main panel in order to power their house. Uh, this is where your twist plug that would plug into that then goes to uh, the house or the transfer switch. And then this also has its own circuit breaker and throw. And then over here, this is the big one. This is the 50 amp plug. And with this generator though, it's got a max of 46 amps. And what that is basically just gonna do is in the case of surging, it's going to, it should anyway, trip this, here's the throw for it. It's gonna trip this circuit breaker 
if it starts surging. Now you probably have it plugged into a 50 amp breaker on your house. So this is just gonna add an extra layer of protection. So if this thing's, uh, if something starts surging, it's probably gonna throw this off first at the generator before it throws off the circuit breaker in your panel. But if not, you've got two uh, safety nets there basically uh, if they start surging to shut it off before any damage is done. So one of the things that I really do like about this generator also is this muffler. This muffler is huge and what it does is it really brings down the noise level. And in comparison with my smaller cat uh, RP5500 watt generator, I really don't notice a difference in noise as far as this one being louder. Uh, I think they're pretty much about the same. And on the outlet here, or inside I should say, there's also a spark arrester so that you don't have to worry so much about starting a fire to grass or if you're in the woods or to any kind of structures. Make sure you have this at least five feet away from uh, anything that could be flammable. And down there is your ground wire and that's where you can attach a ground wire to a stake and then put it down into the ground so that the generator itself is grounded. So one thing that is really nice about this uh, when we start talking about this fuel tank here is it's actually below this cage that goes all the way around it. So if anything falls on it, you have this cage that might be able to stop it before it lands on top and possibly dents or damages the fuel tank. And of course, here's your uh, fuel level indicator. And here's where you'd put the fuel in. This fuel tank has a maximum capacity of 13.2 gallons. And if you're running this thing at 50% load, those 13.2 gallons are going to last about 12 hours. Uh, which equals out to around 1.13 gallons per hour. So that's not horrible. I've seen other generators that are in this, about this generator's class, um, that use actually more fuel than that. So if you get into a generator that's, you know, this size, it's going to use quite a bit more fuel than your smaller or mid-sized generators. Also, something that's really nice about this is this lift hook here. So if you have like a tractor, or something else that can lift heavy stuff, then this can be really nice, especially if like you're on a job site and you're lifting it out or into a truck. That makes things really convenient because this generator is really heavy. Uh, since for the most part it is all steel construction, everything on it's heavy. Uh, right here is actually a tag, 426 pounds. That's Now that's including gas as well, so that's not... That's on a full tank, but you know, that's no joke. This thing is uh, definitely got some weight to it. When it comes to oil changes on this thing, it really doesn't get much easier. Down here is your drain valve. You're gonna put your uh, oil catch down underneath of this. You're gonna spin that thing off and the oil is going to come out and drain. And then over here on the other side, your oil filter is right here on the side, super easy to get to. So oil changes on this are really pretty simple. So now I'm gonna show you how to start this thing up and also be able to give you guys an idea for how loud it is or the amount of noise that comes out of it. And also I'm going to, once I go around it and come back to it, I'm gonna turn this idle control on so you can hear how much the engine comes down uh, when we're not using much electricity out of it. So first thing we gotta check, gas is on. Uh, so that's good, pull our choke out. And now we'll turn our ignition all the way to the right and it'll start up. idle control on and that's what it's going to pull down to when you're not using a whole lot of electricity. All 
All right, guys, to kind of give an overview on everything, I'm super happy with my purchase. The product itself lived up to my expectations for it. I already have a cat. Uh, generator the RP 5500 it's a 5500 watt generator which has very high quality it pulled or it started first pull every single time so I that's kind of why I wanted to get another caterpillar generator just because I knew the quality was there on that one and this one really did live up to my expectations for it and so I've tested this one out on the house I've got it all hooked up uh, and it is able to power my four ton air conditioning unit I did have to install a soft start kit on the air conditioner to get those inrush amps down so it could run it, um, which I would have had to have done with any generator that I got. But not only can this now run my air, my four ton air conditioning unit, but while the air conditioning unit's running, it can run a lot of the house. So it's almost like the power never went off. I can't, for instance, run uh, this with the air conditioning unit and then also for instance run the oven that would be too much of a pull and then if the well kicks on it'd just be too much but being able to run a four ton central air conditioning unit and and cool down the whole house down here in this hot climate uh, so we can sleep at night is a, a, a big game changer so super happy with this very high quality really recommend it if you're not looking for a generator quite this size, I've also got a video uh, review on my CAT RP 5500 watt generator. Uh, I'll post the link up here that you can click on and it'll take you right to the video. But if you are looking for a bigger generator, this I'm really happy with it. So if you're new to the channel and haven't gotten a chance to do so yet, please hit that red subscribe button down below. I do a lot of how to and do it yourself type videos uh, around for around your house and also some review videos for things that can be used on your house. And if you found the information be helpful to you and it helped you make a decision or give you the information that you needed, please also give it a thumbs up down below. And I think I covered everything, but if I didn't, uh, you can write me a, a question in the comment section down below and I'll get right back to you. And I'll see you in the next video.